welcome to the Many Number Systems That Half of Us Haven't Even Heard Of show. I'm your host, Evelyn Gandy, and today we'll be talking about the Babylonian number system as well as two other systems. We will explore many, many topics on these number systems, such as their history, how to count with them, how to perform operations, and many more. So let's go learn something! This number system was created by the Babylonians who thrived in a city called Mesopotamia. It was started about 5,000 years ago, and two mathematicians that may have greatly influenced the creation of this number system were Nabu Rimani and Kidnu. The symbols start off as just tally marks, but then evolved into using the method called cuneiform, which means wedge shape. The Babylonians used clay tablets originally to display these numerals. The Babylonian number system is a base 60 system, or sexagesimal system, which is very neat considering that most number systems use a base 10, or a decimal system. In this system, place value is heavily used, and without it, it wouldn't be able to function properly. These are the symbols used in the Babylonian number system. There's 10, and there's 1. The Babylonians use the symbol for 1 to count all the way up to 9, and they like to set the numbers up in organized piles. When you got past 9, they used however many tens and ones needed to add up to that number. For example, 15 is made up of one ten and five ones to add up to 15. Though, when you reach 60, it is just a one symbol, and it looks like it translates to one. However, the creativity of the Babylonians was present here because they made the number system a positional number system. This basically means that the numbers are sorted into columns. Instead of having them positioned based off of powers of ten, units, tens, hundreds, etc., like our number system, they were arranged in powers of 60. So the first column are all numbers below 60, then the next column are multiples of 60, and then after that, multiples of 3, 6, 0, 0. Before we move on, I'm going to show you a few examples of the Babylonian numbers. Here, we have seven, and notice how it's stacked in a very neat pile, and usually when they're stacked like this, the one on the bottom is the biggest, and because it is below nine, it is made up of all ones to add up to seven. Okay, moving on to here. As you can see, there are tens included in the sequence. Well, this is the number 51. 51 is above nine, so you're going to use some tens to create it. Well, here is 110, 210, 310, 410, 510, so that's 50. Now, as you can see, the tens are arranged in a certain way, and usually that's how they arrange their tens, in a little triangular shape. And then we have our 1 right here, so this adds up to 51. Now, as I said before, they use positional number system to represent their numbers, and if it's above 60, then they use another column. So I'm going to show you how to draw 61. Now, some people may mix this up with the number 2. But actually, this is the number 61. And this space indicates a new column. So you have one unit in the 60 column and one unit in the 1's column. So that means 61. we are going to talk about the multiplication of Babylonian numbers. The Babylonians multiplied by using tables. A table gets its name from the number that is being multiplied by different numbers on the table. So a five times table shows five being multiplied by numerous numbers. They set up a table a certain way every time. The first line shows the number being multiplied, so that's five. The symbol for multiplication, also known as ara in Babylonian. Then here's the number that is being multiplied by 5, and then this is your answer. However, on all the other columns, they, it does not show 5, because you already know you're multiplying by 5 based on the first line. So this is going to, the next lines are going to be multiplication sign, what 5 is being multiplied, and then your answer. And that's all it is. It never shows 5 again, because you already know what you're multiplying by. And that is how you multiply on a table using Babylonian numbers.
on to subtraction. Babylonian subtraction is not very different compared to our modern day subtraction. You basically subtract one number from another using place value. Tens are subtracted from tens, ones are subtracted from ones, etc. And really the only difference is that it's all represented in symbols. There were not any subtraction or addition tables created by the Babylonians. However, the Babylonians realized that you can't subtract larger numbers from smaller numbers, so they would have to borrow from another place value. The symbol for a subtraction is represented by this. Let's go see an example on how this is done. As you can see in step 1, there are enough tens in 42 to subtract with the tens in 25. However, there are not enough ones in 42 to subtract with the ones in 25. So, step 2 shows the breaking down of one of the tens and adding it to the one column to make three tens and twelve ones, minusing the two tens and five ones in 25. Then you do your subtraction and you get your answer, one ten and seven ones, or seventeen. The steps for adding Babylonian numerals. Step one. First, add the column to the far right, the column with the numbers under 60. If your sum is 60 or up, carry a symbol of 1 over to the next column to the left. Step 2. Next, add the 60 column. As mentioned before, the 1 symbol in the 60 column means 60, and the 10 symbol in the 60 column means 600. There can be as much as 59 times 60 in this column before you need to carry symbols over to the 3600s column. Step 3. Add the numerals in the 3600s column, and then times that number by 3600. For example, if you have 6 symbols of 10, and four symbols of one in the 3600s place, the value of this column is 64 times 3600, or 230,400. Step four. After that, you continue to add the numbers in all subsequent columns to the left in the exact same way you did the previous columns, keeping in mind that each time you move to the left, the value of each unit increases by a factor of 60. Step five. Finally, add the value of the columns together to get your answer. The Babylonians also used tables for division, except these tables were called reciprocal tables, which provide a list of numbers and their reciprocals. This is how they would divide their numbers, because if you multiply a number by another number's reciprocal, it divides the number. After completing a lot of research on both the Babylonian and the Hindu Arabic number systems, I was able to compare and contrast the two systems. The Babylonian number system was originated in Mesopotamia. It uses a base 60. It represents all its numbers with only two symbols. It uses cuneiform. It does not use zero. Symbols sh are shown in organized piles. They use tables to divide and multiply. And then the Hindu Arabic originated in Asia. It uses a base 10. It represents all numbers with 10 symbols. It uses 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. It also uses 0. And it is currently used by modern day mathematicians. Both of them use place value. Both were created around 5,000 years ago and both use the same subtraction and addition methods. Okay, now that we know more about the Babylonian number system, let's go learn about two very important modern number systems that are used a lot in today's current society. Alright, the first modern number system that we're going to talk about is the binary system. The binary is a numeric system that is used in electronics which is constructed of only two little numbers, 0 and 1. However, they're very important. It is used in computers because binary is the foundation for manipulation, transfer, and storage of data. Combinations of 1 and 0 work together to form bytes of memory. we're going to talk about the hexadecimal system, which is a number system that uses both numbers and letters to represent numerals. This system operates at a base of 16. A number can be shown by a combination of these 16 symbols. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Well, that was our show. Thanks for watching. 
But before we leave, I just want to clarify one thing. The so-called baby Lonians were not a group of genius babies. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. Alright, stay tuned for a trailer on how Albert Einstein really got that hair. Albert Einstein had the hair of a goddess. It could do everything, luxurious things. It was long and beautiful and just so long and beautiful. <laughs> I could do so many styles. Oh, look at that sass. Mm -hmm. But don't think it was too girly. Don't think so. That was the trendy manly thing back there, having long hair. Not to mention it was my best friend. Oh, and then that weird night where that weird kid came over and cut my hair. Oh, the scissors! Oh, the horror! I was devastated. I was so upset. It was my best friend, and he took it away from me. I tried wig after wig after wig after wig to get the picture. I even tried a Santa hat, but none of them fit to my personality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then there's like one white wig. All of my expectations, and that's how you know me today as the guy with the white hair. <laughs>